Hi, in today's video, we're going to be trying to paint uh, still life here. Move up the camera a bit. Just uh, little two bottles right here on the shelf. I wanted to show a little close up of uh, me mapping them out. And I'm using, going to be using burnt umber to draw them out. And Going to be working on dividing out it's not a site size painting but I want to try the best I can to get proportions obviously and one of the things I like to do you could be a little more technical about it but I'm trying to attempt the little burnt umber for the block in I'm going to be wetting it with a little bit of turpentine and I'll probably do this whole painting with my turps, no oil. We'll see. But first things I want to establish and then do some measuring is this window ledge, window ledge, this edge of the shelf here. And we'll do that, say, right there, right there. Wet this a little more, thin it out a little more. I want just barely a hint. And then the highest bottle, obviously, I don't, if I start drawing this out, then I may run out of room. So we're setting parameters here of where we want things positioned. For instance, I don't want it smack in the middle of the panel. So I'm just going to kind of offset it here. So I know I want the edge of uh, one bottle to be here. And the other edge to go, say, in the middle. While that's in the middle, I think the height of the green bottle will offset this. Now we can see we want the bottom of the green bottle. So we want to set that. An approximate location that's going to be the bottom of the green bottle and we'll make this the top now what I can do is with my brush I can measure heights like I've already set this width but looking at it now I really want to get the height relationship of the green bottle so that's going to dictate the width of the composition here and I'm measuring the height of the green bottle in relation to the width of the whole project. It appears to be that the two bottles combined equal half the height of the green bottle. So with that determined, I'm going to approximate. Yeah, you could get a, a ruler and do this pretty exacting, but a lot of times when you're out there painting, you're just, you need a little bit of speed. So I'm going to do that. And it's about exactly where I thought right in the middle of the so now I'll set the clear bottle the edge of that kind of falls just below the ledge of the shelf and in relationship to the height of the clear bottle to the green I'm going to again measure the green Wherever I stick my arm, I want to, when I'm measuring, I don't want to go like this to measure the green and then do this and measure in relation to the clear. I want to keep them at the same distance. So the height of that bottle, it's about two thirds. So we'll do this and got a mark. Okay. Got some things in place here. Now I'm going to start drawing and we can see that and what I'm going to do now, I'm not looking at shape of the bottle so much now, I'm making a geometric shape. So I'll make basically a rectangle with these proportions I set and then flesh out the bottle after. So, and this will give me some indications now I'm determining the width of the clear compared to the green. It's just a smidge wider. 
So back to the height of the green and the width of the green. It's going to be probably about a quarter. So Three. That's pretty close. Mark the width of the green. The width of the green compared to the width of the clear is just a little bit narrower. So the clear is wider than the green bottle. So I'm going to set a width. It's going to be right about there. Continue with my geometric blocking. This way I don't spend a lot of time drawing something out and then I don't like its location. I can get a sense when I make some generic geometric, or not generic, but make some geometric shapes in relation to each other and to the edges of the panel up to your painting uh, surface. So there's some interesting negative shape and all that sort of thing. So here's the bottom of the green bottle. There's the side. So we have a little bit of overlap of the clear, which I kind of like. Now, I'm just going to set the back of the shelf, which is obviously going to be a little about right there. Let's go ahead and map that out. I like to draw through the shapes because especially with glass you might need that indication you can always paint over it and of course I'm freehanding this straight line but obviously you want to make it straight I could use a ruler I can do that later in the painting process so just setting again the front of the shelf Where I marked it before because the clear bottle comes just a little bit over the edge of the end of the shelf, which I like. I like that. It's going to give just a little bit of shadow. And uh, yeah, this should uh, turn out pretty cool. Mark the thickness of the shelf that everything is sitting on. And again, I'm not. To concern, obviously I'll measure with my brush. I can measure from the bottom up to determine if everything's are basically straight rather than use a ruler, but it looks pretty good. So going to now oh I'm also going to divide these in half. So when I match up each side of the bottles, I'll have some uh, information. Doesn't have to be dark, just enough of an indication to show the middle of each bottle so I don't get things uh, lopsided. And even though this has, it's at a three-quarter view, it's kind of a squarish bottle. I'm not going to put that line. I'm still going to draw the middle indicator here. Just enough of a okay now I'm going to start drawing things out and I'll get back to you in a few minutes uh, because now it's just still now I'm going to divide I like how the arrangement is now I'm going to divide the shapes more to get the cap and that sort of thing the cork and uh, same division process height to width and so I'll measure same proportions and Get back to you in a few minutes. I've uh, drawn out the subject using measurements from the brush compared to the width, height, and so on. And also, if it the drawing is straight in relation to the parallel edges of the panel, you can just take your brush, hold it with one finger, and start at one point of width that you want to measure, 
and just run your finger down there. If there's any variance, you can then draw it out and fix it. Now I'm just going to uh, kind of block in some of the painting with some uh, burnt umber tone to suggest a little bit of shadow. And we're going to do that now. Just to get some darks on here and see how it's going to come together. Uh, right now, just in this drawing phase, uh, we're at about 20 minutes into the project. It's not about the time. I just, uh, you know, this is the time you want to spend very carefully making sure your drawing's right. Otherwise, it's going to uh, be a problem later on in the painting process. Didn't put all the paint and all the technical skill and rendering, but it's that drawing. It's like building a house. You gotta have great foundation. So let's get some darks on there. Again, this is burnt umber I'm using. Just to get some idea of the light dark pattern, how it's gonna play out. I think uh get some cast shadow here. I'll apply it and then wipe it with a uh, paper towel or my finger maybe just to give some idea a little bit you don't want to obliterate the drawing too much because uh, you need something to follow a little bit So, and you can see that this is going to be a little darker because light's hitting up there. So, we'll get that up on here. Wipe off some of the burnt umber just so I'm barely. And I get a paper towel. Sorry, radio's on in the back. Hope you can hear okay. You got to turn it off so you don't hear that stuff. Give me a second. All right, got rid of the radio. Sorry. And reiterating some of the dark under the shelf. Kind of liking this. It's a basic little setup, just more for this demo video but I like this negative shape here and this shape here and now we're going to start mixing up some color to begin painting. I think for this green I'm going to try just the ultramarine uh, blue and the lemon yellow. I might introduce some viridian. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, first actually what I might do is match up this wall color so that's a big key to key two and then I'll know how dark to make the bottom in relation to that so let me mix that up and block that in so here I've laid in some basic tones of the shelf now I'm working on some dark elements of the green bottle and uh, I'm going to be working on this bottle also and so pay attention time. I want to make sure we have some interest and uh, hopefully we can uh, make a go of this. I believe it's uh, part four. I've been working on the green bottle. Uh, so actually I'm at an hour in right now. And uh, it takes a little time to do these little still lifes if you want to practice your rendering and proportioning skills. But uh, now I'm going to be mixing up the color for the, uh, the clear bottle. I did have to introduce a Viridian for the green bottle. Uh, just kind of needed it. So until I get uh, this stuff going, I'll fill you in when I get some of the bottle in. A uh, couple things I have to work on. I might clean this up a bit, uh, but it's coming out fairly well. 
course, at the very end, I'll put the icing on the, the highlights, of course, at the very end. I'm shooting a few minutes on uh, the clear glass bottle, which I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue, a little viridian green, some white, and just trying to get a tone in here that I can then, then manipulate and adjust all the values, put the highlights on, that sort of thing. So, as you can see, because the clear bottle has its own, I say clear, but it's, has a favors a bluish cast, bluish green. So, what I'm attempting is to get that bluish green cast down first as a mass tone, as I talked about before. Just get some color going on here. And then I can accentuate darks and lights and get the uh, highlights on there. But so far I'm kind of Kind of liking it for a little study. Good practice to practice my uh, proportioning skills. And I'm going to take a smaller brush, work in some of these details here, which are quite something, and try Viridian and the uh, lemon yellow and that has a little blue in it try to get that little bit of ultramarine blue in there also and we will see what happens just suggesting Sometimes I might not put every single reflection in because uh, I think sometimes it can break up an object too much. So something to be careful of, depending on the scale you're working. Uh, that's just something I'm trying to do here. It is quite the challenge. Getting all these little nuances but you kind of got to take the time to try to see them because that's what's going to uh, impact the work. And now I'm just working on the actual shadow back in here. Let's see if I can get this to go the way I want. Because don't forget, we already have some light tone on there. So... Get a little warm in there with a little umber shelf color mixed in there just to get this back in here. And the shadow on the wall behind the objects, trying to find them, get them in there. And then when I put my highlights on, I'll have something to contrast against and it should pop. That's what I'm doing my work right here. Still kind of uh, getting in some tones behind basically the glass and then I'll put tones on the front of the glass. Quite, quite a complex little subject here. But uh, that's why I'm doing it. I want to be challenged. Learn the skills because I've been wanting to do some still life. And uh, I actually would like to do car parts as a subject. But uh, still thinking on that angle. 
Let's get some more stronger darks right in here. Oh, now it's coming to life. Coming to life. Let's see what we got. Now this little bubble, it's like an indentation underneath the bottle. That's going to be a challenge to suggest, but all I can do is the best I can do, right? So kind of get that in there. Suggest it as best we can. I think the key is going to be not making the not making it too dark. Watch my edge control. Watch out for certain edges in a given area. Because that can you don't want to stand out. You want to gotta be careful of that. So just tickling the paint with the tip of the brush, trying to find that happy medium. Suggestibility with detail, and see how far I can get with that. And. Not, not too shabby, not too shabby, just doing a few little minor, we got some uh, shapes in here to suggest. And I'm going to just kill. See, that's the key, like this uh, burnt umber sketch line. Should have probably thinned out the paint even a little more, but I didn't, so I'm working with it. And get this in there. Now I'm going to get just a few little highlights working on this part here, right maybe there. And see something there. Now the top of this rim will be the wall color grayed down. See if I have a little bit of that left. Right with some blue. See if we can stand off here. And Try to bring it up a little bit. Seems to be working. Cleaning up some edges. Cork. Yeah, I'm liking this. This is uh, liking it a lot. A little darkness right along. So when I get the highlight on the cork, let's get this in there. Now let's get some. Work highlight here. A little white into my mixture for the shelving. And a little bit of the wall. Let's see if we can pop this out a little bit. See if we can pop it out. Now something to not get detracted from. Be careful of your ellipticals. Sometimes we get so caught up in one area and we get the elliptical in relation to the bottom. So it sits in space, uh, can be difficult. If you're not, you gotta be careful. So 
something to be aware of. I'm just going to put a little more white in there and see if I can I like that better. And sometimes you can make something lighter rather than try to make something darker in here with the shadow here. So right there I've already created. So you don't always have to darken something all the time. You can lighten something around it. Depends. But something to experiment with. Now I'm going to put a few highlights on here. And I'm actually, it's a kind of a, what am I fluorescent on? I'm going to experiment with a little bit of blue, just a hint in my white Nultoline blue, very, very little, and see how those highlights go on. And this is where you want to just touch them on there. Don't try to avoid noodling. We'll do that after. So just put them where you see them. If we think they're too strong, we can come back and uh, you can always uh, knock them down. But be careful. And don't overkill. This and as I pull away from my initial stroke, I, I, I'm very gently lifting the brush so it kind of tapers. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's uh, get getting there. Now I think I'm going to go a little more blue, just get a little bit deeper value because on the green, uh, it'll still seem like very light because the dark's around it. So kind of liking this. I'm going to do a couple more just uh, viridian highlights in the in the clear glass with viridian and white to try to get those colorful highlights in the clear glass and we'll see what happens. Nah, this isn't, I might have to mix in a little bit of yellow to I guess this might work. We'll see. All right, let's try to put them where we see them. Careful not to make them all the same. Add interest. Yeah, I'm liking that. Liking that a lot. So, I don't think I'm going to be doing too much more here, but, uh, oh, I want to do, let me go ahead and get these shadows behind the bottles, try to connect the two, because you want to do that when the paint's wet, uh, the uh, wall color. Just going to, a little bit of ultramarine blue, into my shelf color, mixed in with a little bit of the wall color, and uh, see if we can become successful with that. And just a little, you don't want your brush too wet, try to keep the paint dry. And this is where, yeah, it would have been nice to use some oil some thick paint, the uh, turpentine, and with the oil, of course, it's going to bond to the panel better, but you got to be careful with the turpentine not to wet it down too much because uh, turpentine evaporates and uh, 
to cause bonding issues with the paint layers. So, just want to get this. Get, just try to suggest. I'm looking now. Soften some edges because it's a diffused white. Nice, okay, I'm liking that. And just get some shadows there on the bottom on the shelf. Just and a little bit here. And very lightly. Okay, now get some tabletop color to cut in here. And clean up my edges a bit, soften, kind of just melt that away, get a little more, cut that in. There. All right, now just a little bit. There we go. This is just a little too dark. Okay. Now, you could go in here, obviously, which, depending how finished you want your painting, I will lighten this a bit. Matter of fact, I can throw, just going to do a little bit of shad red with my orangey color just to get some variation in there. Lighten it up just a bit. Oh, it's a little too... Just a bit. Okay, I think that uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of how I go about doing a still life painting. And I hope you find this useful. And Please comment, give me some likes, subscribe to my channel, and please share this if uh, you find it useful and you know an artist okay. that can uh, benefit. This is the painting. After about an hour, I don't know, 20 minutes. So obviously you can spend as much time as you want on these things. Uh, there's the setup. It's been a little bit, I think I moved it just a fraction of an inch, but you get the idea. And try to show you some. This is a six by six inch panel. I don't know how well this camera does up close, but I will obviously go through here, add a little bit of the grain detail. Nothing overpowering. I'll take a good last look at my edges, make sure there's uh, proper soft ones, and uh, work on just a few minor things. I want a little more brush strokes, uh, color variation in the background. Maybe picking up a little bit of all these colors in a similar range, but hope you found it enjoyable.